Hello, Familia. This is Acts chapter 21. It says, After we tore ourselves away from them and set sail, we came by a direct route to Kos, the next day to Rhodes, and from there Patar- to Patara. Finding the ship, crossing over to Phoenicia, we boarded and set sail. After we sighted Cyprus, leaving it on the left, we sailed on to Syria and arrived at Tyre because the ship was to unload its cargo there. So we found some disciples and stayed there seven days. Through the Spirit, they told Paul not to go to to Jerusalem. When our days there were over, we left to continue our journey, while all of them, with their wives and children, escorted us out of the city. After kneeling down on the beach to pray, we said goodbye to one another. Then we boarded the ship and and they returned home. When we completed our voyage from Tyre, we reached Ptolemy, where we greeted the brothers and slayed, or stayed them, forgive me, and stayed with them one day. The next day we left and came to Caesarea, where we entered the house of Philip, the evangelist who was one of the seven and stayed with him. This man had four virgin daughters who prophesied, glory be to the Lord. While we were staying there many days, a prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. He came to us, took Paul's belt, tied his own feet and hands, and said, This is what the Holy Spirit says. In this way, the Jews in Jerusalem will bind the man who owns this belt and deliver him into Gentile hands. When he, we heard this, both we and the local people begged him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul replied, What are you doing, weeping and breaking my heart? For I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah and amen. May it be so. Since he would not be persuaded, we stopped talking and simply said, The Lord's will be done. The Lord's will be done. Hallelujah and amen. After these days, we got up and got ready, rather, and went up to Jerusalem. Some of the disciples from Caesarea also went with us and brought us to Manasson, a Cypriot, who, an, and an early disciple with whom we were to stay. When we reached Jerusalem, the brothers welcomed us gladly. The following day, Paul went in with us to James, and all the elders were present. After greeting them, he related in detail what God did among the Gentiles through his ministry. Hallelujah! When they heard it, they glorified God and said, You see, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are who have believed, and they are all zealous for the law. But they have been told about you, that you teach all the Jews who are among the Gentiles to abandon Moses by telling them not to circumcise their children or to walk in their customs. In our customs, rather. So what is to be done? They will certainly hear that you've come. Therefore, do what we tell you. We have four men who have obligated themselves with a vow. Take these men, purify yourself along with them, and pay for them to get their heads shaved. Then everyone will know that what they were told about you amounts to nothing, but that you yourself are also careful about observing the law. With regard to the Gentiles who have believed, we have written a letter containing our decision that they should keep themselves from food, sacrifice to idols, from blood, from what is strangled, and from sexual immorality. Then the next day, Paul took the men, having purified himself along with them, and entered the temple, announcing the completion of the purification days when the offering for each of them would be made. As the seven days were about to end, the Jews from Asia saw him in the temple complex, stirred up the whole crowd and seized him, shouting, Men of Israel, help! This is the man who teaches everyone everywhere against our people, our law, and this place. What's more, he also brought Greeks into the temple and has profaned this holy place. For they had previously seen Trophimus, the Ephesian in the city with him, and they supposed that Paul had brought him into the temple complex. The whole city was stirred up, and the people rushed together. They seized Paul, dragged him out of the temple complex, and at once the gates were shut. As they were trying to kill him, word went up to the commander of the regiment that all Jerusalem was in chaos. 
Taking along soldiers and centurions, he immediately ran down to them. Seeing the commander and the soldiers, they stopped beating Paul. Then the commander came up, took him into custody, and ordered him to be bound with two chains. He asked who was who he was and what he had done. Some in the mob were shouting one thing and some another. Since he was not able to get reliable information because of the uproar, he ordered him to be taken into the barracks. When Paul got, got to the steps, he had to be carried by the soldiers because of the mob's violence. For the mass of people followed, yelling, take him away. As he was about to be brought into the barracks, Paul said to the commander, am I allowed to say something to you? He replied, do you know Greek? Aren't you the Egyptian who raised a rebellion some time ago and led 4,000 assassins into the wilderness? Paul said, I'm a Jewish man from Tarsus of Cilicia, a citizen of an important city. Now I ask you, let me speak to the people. After he had been, after he had given permission, Paul stood on the steps and motioned with his hand to the people. When there was a great hush, he addressed them in the Hebrew language. And I am going to end there um, for the sake of just recording a chapter at a time for this, but I will continue in Hebrews chapter 22 here next. And so may the Lord empower us to hear his word and to hear his Paul's testimony about the Lord Yeshua clearly and with all all of our heart that we possibly can in the mighty name of Jesus. And may we be empowered to follow the example of Lord Yeshua and that Lord Yeshua has set in the people that he has given us. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Hallelujah and amen. <laughs> Bye, familiar.